All right, welcome to Chineseium part two. And today we have this. Well, I already took it out of the box. Just hot off the, out of the mail. Um, this is gonna go on this guy, which we've talked about a little bit in the past. This is my uh, Airsoft trainer for, uh, you know, Glock 19. And part two, or the last major component of, there we go framing, right? Hopefully focus stays good. Uh, this, so what this is, is this is my sort of primary training uh, firearm. This is a Glock 19 with brown nose slide, uh, Trijicon RMR, Trijicon Night Sights, Surefire uh, Weapon Light, Overwatch Precision Trigger, and newly installed Ghost Edge Connector, which I love. Uh, it also has a Brownells uh, barrel which um, just quick opinion on that. Uh, if you're gonna replace the barrel, just go Glock, like unless you're looking for a certain look. But uh, yeah, Glock, Glock barrels, you know, they're gonna outshoot you. So anyway, um, this one had a bunch of problems when it was breaking in, which was, it was kind of interesting. So anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at uh, the RMR versus the fake RMR. And I could tell you already, um, <laughs> since you guys think I'm putting, pointing this in my face, I can tell you already that uh, this is not that great. It looks off. The dimensions just look off. <laughs> like, this is kind of funny. Let me, let me see if I can zoom in here. There we go. It's almost like they milled, like they cut those corners and they're like drilled holes in the in the aluminum that is aluminum uh, and then kind of went between them that's uh, kind of crazy so that does seem to be some sort of glass there's no battery in it so I can't see the dot yet which I expect to be horrendous but you know just when you're looking at this thing right off the right off the gate when the buttons feel different you know um, Let's just see here, All right? So the buttons here have a very flat, hard feeling. I'm just gonna reset my... It's actually kind of hard on a real RMR to push those buttons. Um, these are, you know, little dumb tactile switches in there. Uh, so there's that. Uh, the other thing is they used hex. Um, keys for the windage and elevation adjustments, which is wrong on a, R, on a real RMR, you can, uh, you can actually use, the best thing to use is a casing, like a nine millimeter casing, which surprisingly, I don't have one on my desk. Usually after you start shooting seriously, they just sort of invade your life. You open your car door and you know, several fall out. Um, I don't even know where they're coming from anymore. Uh, so yeah, they got a hex, on there which may even be come from the factory rounded that's awesome they don't definitely don't look super positive the other thing is that back corner there is not chamfered or whatever you'd call that it's not rounded very well it's very square versus the definitely legit one now, this is the funny thing I commented on on the fake uh, XC1. It's almost like the text is better <laughs> on the uh, on the fake because they silk screen it or something on there versus uh, Trijicon that that uh, engraves it. So it has like a more it pops a little bit more. Um, RM07 versus RM06, so maybe, I don't know, maybe they're, this one is, they're just trying to copy an original or like a type one or something like that, and this is a type two, I don't know, but the dots are not in the right spot, the serial numbers are not in the right spot. Um, PE119, well that's, I guess, the same there, but obviously serial numbers are not the same. Um, all right, well, let's, uh, Let's rip this thing off, whatever it came on, and take a look at the inside. Oh. 
well, okay, so first of all, that was a weird, why is there a magnet in there? Well, I guess there's one in the RMR as well. Learn something every day. All right, why are you not working? Minus, plus. It'd be hilarious if this thing came DOA from the factory. Oh no, there we go, the dot's on. Well, as any time you're playing with layers of Chinesium, things refuse to work properly. Absolutely fucking refuse. Nah. God damn it. Alright, well this is almost guaranteed to happen with Chinesium bullshit. What you got is you got the Chinesium RMR, and you got the uh, Imposter Airsoft Slide. You know, I don't know. The Airsoft Slide is probably built for what it's supposed to do, but they shipped it with these screws that are, I don't know, may as well be made of plastic. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I think you can see that. This one's stripped already. And so this... These little nubs seem like about the right width for that, but these screws that go in uh, there are substantially smaller than you know what is designed to go through a standard uh, RMR. So what they did, what the what the slide manufacturer did, what they did, you know, I don't know, maybe it's a clever solution, and maybe it would work if I had a reel, but come on, who's going to do that? Uh, RMR is they had these little adapter sleeves but the adapter sleeves do not actually fit in there so now I'm basically asking myself do I want to go drill that out <laughs> hmm if I had a drill press that would be an easy question yes I would drill it out um, but since I don't, maybe I just have to get percussive. So maybe we try that first. Get some screwdriver on screwdriver hate going here. Oh ho ho! It seems to. Well, that may have been the answer. Let's do a test fit. This is the stripped one. So it gets the big one. Yeah, this is working. Shittily, but it's working. So here's a question. What do you use Loctite on it when you know this shit's all basically made of cheese? The difference between great gear and shitty gear is its ability to stack tolerances. Alright, there we go. Yep, that looks like it's going to work. That's going to work, I think. Yep. All right, I'm gonna put it in with small size screwdriver. Screwdriver first. It's fascinating because I can feel the screws flexing. Ah, uh, they're probably stripping out. All right, well, there we go. All right, yeah, this thing's a mess. Let's talk about it. All right, so here you go. You get, you get the fake one, which is a tenth of the price of the real one. So let me just see if I can do some quick zeroing here. So my procedure for zeroing a red dot is usually to put the dot on top of the front sight. That's probably too far.
All right, so here's another thing to see. The, the clicks are very definitive, but very like, you, you can tell that it's like plastic gears in there. So, you know, this thing is just not, <laughs> it's, it, it's an airsoft gun. You know, what do you, what do you want? And this is Chineseium and you know, it's not gonna hold up the same way. And you know, zero with this thing, I'll, I'll put in another clip, you know, at, at, you know, five yards or something like that. This thing's shooting at like, you know, almost a three inch group. So it's, you know, you're, you're not gonna get accuracy, a lot of accuracy out of it. So if this doesn't hold zero, you know, that's not that big of a deal, right? So it's really just for it to be a similar muscle memory type thing. So we're gonna talk about the quality of the optics here real quick, because again, I think this is gonna serve the purpose that it was designed for, but it's definitely not, you know, like big red flag for anyone that thinks they're getting something that's like real, because this is not even close. So anyway, um, oh, let's see if it cycles. I think this still has some gas in it. It does not have any PVs in it. All right, that seems to work. I think the cyclic rate was slowed down, uh, which would be good because I think it was a little bit fast compared to real deal here. So um, let's see if we can compare quality of dots. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. All right, so you are just seeing a big old blob. But you can see that it's pretty circular, right? And we're gonna come back to that, but it's nice, it's circular. This is the 6MOA. It's appearing in the camera a definitely a lot larger than it is, uh, appears in real life. Um, I think in real life it, it looks a little bit, you know, just for comparison, about like the size of the, the front sight uh, circular portion. Let's see if we can get this guy on camera. All right. Yeah, see how this just kind of appears like a smudge? All right? Well, I can tell you from looking at it, it's kind of like a smudge and um, it doesn't look like one dot it looks a little bit almost like eotechy where it's got like a, a series of dots now here's the other thing I wear glasses right? I wear contacts and when I've got my contacts on this guy looks like a smudge um, and I'll give you a quick way of testing this so if you uh, if you mount the handgun, right, and you're looking at the dot, and you rotate the gun, if the smudge stays relative to the gun, or the optic, the problem's with the optic. If the, if the smudge stays constant as you rotate, that means it's your eye, right? And so basically what you're looking for is you're looking to determine which uh, which lens, whether it's the lens on your eye or your prescription lens or the lens here, is deforming that dot. Um, and with these red dots, you know, all, here's, you know, another example, right, the MRO. You can kind of quickly, quickly figure that out. So let's see if I can get the... Right, and so you see a pretty tight little dot. When I look through it, I see a little bit of a smudge. And then when I rotate it, the dot stays consistent. So I can rotate this all the way around. The dot stays consistent because it's my eye warping it. Now, when you're looking at a shitty version, right, so that could be a little bit harder to test, but we can apply the same test. And there's both going on. So there's blooming that's following the that's following the dot and then there's blooming that's staying the same that's clearly caused by my eyes but the thing's changing shape so outside the scope of this video to talk about how your prescriptions interact with your optics but they do and for the purposes of assessing how good this is, uh, you're getting what you're paying for and you're paying $30 versus something that stickers for like $300.
So, you know, come on. Uh, I'm not, I'm not surprised. I'm not upset. Uh, but you know, it's if you've got one of these on your gun and you think you're gonna like go to a class and and hang tight, you know, uh, it's gonna it's gonna be hilarious. Um, the other thing is, I don't know how anyone could um, could confuse the real with the with the fake just from looking at the outside. I didn't even feel like I needed to show you the underneath of it. Surprisingly, the liner, the sealed liner, uh, looked um, very much like the uh, the original one did. But when you were just looking at the battery contacts, it looked nothing like it. So you know they kind of focused on getting the outside right and not the inside. Um, here's another thing to look at. Let's see if I can get my lighting right so you can see it. The thickness of this top bezel is vastly different. You can see that. So there you go. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, I think I got what I wanted here, which is a trainer that's gonna be great in the garage for practicing at three yards. Um, and yeah, no complaints there. So again, get what you pay for. Um, and then obviously I just love this thing. I, lo I love this thing. So, you know, we kind of look at the Look at the progress of training here. So, garage, range, bears. <laughs> All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you got any questions, leave it in the the you know comments below. Hit me up, ask me questions, all that kind of stuff. Um, these are six MOA, by the way. That's why the dot looked huge. Um, and then. Uh, uh, Chinese -eam garbage. It took about a month for this to show up, and uh, I think they used like three different tracking numbers. So, um, yeah, good times.